sir i'll i'll ask him to join okay 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 uh, uh, good morning uh, today we will be having a bedside clinical presentation by uh, dr shayandeep pradhan who is a third year junior resident at rk shiva pradeshan vivekan institute medical sciences uh, dr shayandeep you can share your screen and present uh, stop at the end of history we have some discussion and then proceed on to the examination and further discussion you can share your screen shayandeep yes sir <clears throat> so am i audible sir yes yes please good morning good morning everyone i am going to present a clinical case on locally advanced breast carcinoma my patient uh, mrs xyz 50 years old female housewife from kolkata presented in the outdoor with chief complaint of lump in right breast for past 3 months The patient was apparently well three months back when she noticed a lump in her right breast, which was insidious in onset and rapidly progressive in size. It was initially around two into two centimeter in size, but now increased to approximately six into six centimeter. It was painless initially, but now mild pain is present after the biopsy was taken. There is no history of nipple discharge, trauma, loss of appetite. or significant weight loss any constitutional symptoms like chronic cough hemoptysis etc there is no history suggestive of distant metastasis in the past history there is no history of tb intake of ocps or hrt there is no history of chronic medical illness or surgery in the past chemotherapy or radiations in the past there is no drug allergy personal history patient is non vegetarian sleep normal normal bowel bladder habits there is no addiction no allergies comorbidities nil in the menstrual history the uh, the patient <clears throat> had her menarche menarche at the age of 14 years of age cycle regular du duration 3 to 4 days she attended menopause 10 years ago uh, obstetric history para 3 living 3 3 children all normal delivery all children were breastfed for a minimum of 8 months first child at the age of 25 years and the last child at the age of 36 years no history of abortion or miscarriage family history there is no history of breast cancer in first degree relatives no history of brca related malignancy in the family like pancreatic prostate colorectal or ovarian cancer so below is the pedigree chart of the family and the shaded portion is the <clears throat> patient herself Right. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so the patient uh, go to the history present in this uh, slide. Yes, sir. One minute. History present. Yes, sir. Yeah. So you try to think that you are presenting a patient <coughs> having a breast lump. Yes, sir. So you are very uh, become very brief. It should be little more uh, description about the swelling itself. You see, he have described the swelling she is getting in her breast. So. Sometimes you have to exclude from the history yes, whether sir. she has got any other swelling in the breast. That is important. It's a okay. it's a it's a multi-centered disease or not? She has got any swelling in the opposite breast. Some breast cancer may be bilateral. Okay, sir. Some patient can complain whether she has got any swelling in the axilla or not. Okay. Yes, if sir. if there is a gross lymphadenopathy, that patient. So first you try to describe about the swelling itself. You have described the swelling there. Two by two, and then rapidly increase in size to the present size of six point six. So that is the index swelling patient is complaining of. Yes, sir. Next is this swelling can be a multiple swelling. This swelling can be a swelling in the axilla or in the neck. Yes, so sir. in the history or asking means patient is not aware of any swelling in the axilla or in the neck. Yes, sir. Next, you can ask the patient. <coughs> Whether she noticed any skin changes, like nipple retraction, 
any retraction of the uh, skin, any ulceration of the skin. Okay, yes. so the yes, other sir. thing that should come in the history. Don't make the history so brief for a patient having a, a LABC. Uh, exam yes. will be waiting to listen to your history properly. Okay, sir. Okay, so that is the history about the swelling and then any secondary change in the breast. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Next, you said constitutional symptoms. What do you like to mean by this? Constitutional symptoms like chronic cough, hemoptysis means what? Uh, symptoms of uh, tuberculosis, sir. Uh, you see, an elderly lady presenting with a lump in the breast, yes, rapidly in his size, do you think the tuberculosis will come as the next DD? Uh, it's unlikely. Yes, sir. But you have to mention everything. You see, you have used one liner saying that in the history size to have distant metastasis. Yes, sir. What are the symptoms you incurred from the patient to make such a statement? What are the important symptoms you've asked? One, you mentioned that there is no loss of appetite or signaling to any weight loss. Yes, sir. So that is a general symptom. Patient having malignant disease may have may, uh, yes, anorexia and weight loss. So that is one part you're starting with. General symptom. That is not specific of any distant metastasis. What other history have asked from the patient to say there is no symptom size of distant metastasis? Sir, uh, bone pain. Like, what uh, do you ask? What, what symptom you ask from the patient to ascertain that? Uh, sir, I will ask the patient if, uh, if she experienced any bone pain or not. If where, there is... where? Bone pain means what? Um, what is the usual symptoms that patient usually presents with having a distant bony metastasis? Uh, in the thoracodorsal sp uh, spines, is there tenderness over the thoracodorsal? Then you're not tenderness. You are asking about the symptoms. Yes. Sir. Examination will come. Hmm. The patient usually complains of recent onset of low back pain. Low. If the patient has low back pain for about 20-25 years, it's unlikely to be a metastatic disease. A recent onset of low back pain, that is one side. Yes, sir. Where else bony metastasis may occur? Mm. Apart from the lumbar vertical body, where else the metastasis in the bone can occur? Because you said no history size to descend metastasis. You have to ask a number of questions. Some candidate will start saying no a low backache, no pain in the chest, uh, uh, no excess pain in the limbs, okay? And yes, then sir. no calf pain, uh, chest pain. So if somebody will start giving all this. But one liner is enough. But you have to be knowing that what are the things you have inquired about the patient? Um, pain in the long bones. Means yes. The there may be excess and pain in the bones. Yes, sir. There may be a bony swelling. Yes, sir. In the long bones, there may be bony swelling. There is swelling in the scalp. Yes, sir. Okay. So, the other sides of bony metastasis. What else you have asked? Um, because you have to start thinking the metastasis can occur on different sites. One is bone. Agreed. Next. Uh, uh, it can be uh, means uh, in the lungs also. In the lungs. What are the symptoms you learn from the patient? Uh, there is uh, any um, uh, breathlessness or any yes. features. Uh, yeah. What else? Uh, Redness. Redness. What else? Mm, cough. With, cough. Yeah. Cough. Yes. Ex expectoration, sir. What expectoration? Do you think patient will have uh, a lot of expectoration? Have no, sir. No, no. So, we talk of specific symptoms. Patient may have chest pain. Chest pain. Which can be a plurality type of chest pain. It can be breathlessness. Yes, sir. It can be hemoptysis. Yes, sir. There may be metastasis in the liver. liver. What symptom patient may have? Uh, the lacking pain over the uh, abdomen. Then the, there will there will be ascites. Um, so what the patient will complain of? Because it classically yes, patient may have abdominal discomfort. Yes, sir. abdominal discomfort, and already I mentioned about appetite and weight loss. Yes, sir. And then <clears throat> and jaundice is quite late. Although you ask about the jaundice. Patient having liver metastasis, jaundice is not the usual presentation. But still, you should ask about history of jaundice. Yes, sir. Then, brain metastasis is brain metastasis, yes, rare. Rare. But if rare. you are asking about the symptoms in a patient with LAVC, you should ask that also. Yes, sir. How how patient is brain metastasis can present? You see, to, to, to write this single line, you have to uh, ask these questions. Yes, sir. 
So how how patient is brain metastasis can present to you? What symptom patient may have? There is a uh, deposit in the uh, brain parenchyma. What is going to happen? Uh, First thing is there is the symptoms of increased intracranial tension. Headache. The patient will come. Off. Yes, headache, vomiting, vomiting, sir. Blurring of vision. Hmm. Patient may have syncope. Yes, sir. Patient may have convulsion. Okay. And if yes, the sir. metastasis occur in a particular area of the brain, patient may have focal neurological deficit. So these are the all these are the all important things one should ask. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Patient can present with a lump in the lower abdomen. Okay, but yes, sir. in in a postmenopausal woman, that is not very usual. Likely, yes, in sir. in a in a postmenopausal woman, don't uh, find patient presenting the crooked back tumor. Crooked, yes, sir. Okay, so to say a proper history in a patient under LABC, you have to talk about the swelling. You have to talk about other swelling in the breast, opposite breast, axilla, opposite axilla, neck, and get history about any secondary change in the breast which patient can notice some some changes in the breast can be noticed by the patient yes sir uh, like nipple retraction okay some skin changes like any swelling in the skin any uh, uh, skin retraction or ulceration okay so this is about the history of presenting this okay go to the next next slide Yes, sir. So, uh, these are all very important part of a patient having CA breast. But in one liner, you can say the patient has no major medical illness in the past. Okay, sir. There is no history of any surgery in the past. Done. These are the two important points. And then mention specifically about tuberculosis or any history of OCP intake or HRT. Yes, yeah, okay, sir. Okay? Yes. Personal history, I've mentioned all the points, but here you should mention about the marital status also. Okay. okay Next. Sir. Next. <clears throat> what is the importance of taking menstrual history in a patient who has got CA breast? Sir, what is the importance uh, <coughs> of menstrual history in a patient having CA breast? Uh, sir, early menarche is a risk factor of um, breast capsinoma because um uh, our limit, uh, it it there is an unopposed action of estrogen so it's an uh, risk factor of uh, you have to you have to complete both the sentence together early menarche and late, and late menopause delayed menopause yes if early early menarche and early menopause that may not be a risk factor so yes. early menarche and delayed menopause are associated with a higher risk of breast cancer, breast cancer because there is long period of unopposed uh, estrogen action estrogen action yes sir okay uh, you mentioned about the obstetrical history. Yes, sir. What is the importance of obstetrical history in a patient who has got CA breast? Sir, obstetrical history is uh, the breast feed, breastfeeding is, sir. Uh, no, not feeding. I have asked about the obstetrical history first. Is there any uh, correlation sir, between obstetrical history and breast cancer? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, what, the, about, what about nulliparity? Okay. Nulliparity is a risk factor of breast cancer, sir. Obese? Uh, Obese, nulliparous woman has a higher risk of breast cancer, number one. This patient is not nulliparous. Yes, she has sir. three children Each. being delivered. And what do you think? Uh, what is the correlation between age and early first age. pregnancy? Sir, early age of, um, early age of pregnancy is, a, is not a risk factor of um, breast cancer. It, it's said to be protective. Early, protective. early, early age at pregnancy. But uh, first pregnancy at late age. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, that is another important risk factor. Yes, sir. What is the correlation between uh, suppose some patient has got two or three miscarriages? Is, is the risk increased or is it decreased? Patient has got two or three miscarriages. Is is number of miscarriage being associated with the higher risk or lower risk? So miscarriages. Uh... What happens in miscarriage? What happens in normal pregnancy? Normal so, pregnancy is a period of progesterogenic phase. Yes, sir. And that is protective, sir. That is protective. Yes. Sir. Patient has got more history of miscarriages, has higher risk of breast cancer. Breast cancer, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, because sir. there is early termination of the progesterone phase. So the other things you should be correlating. 
Yes, sir. Well, you describe the history because some examiner might obstruct you in all these points and ask about the correlation. Okay. Uh, next. Uh, you have drawn the family history. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, in which group of patient this patient falls in? It says sporadic breast cancer. It says familial or hereditary breast cancer. Uh, so this is a sporadic breast cancer, sir. What is the incidence of uh, sporadic breast cancer among the uh, group of patients having breast cancer? Is it common? It is uh, less common? So it is uh, more common, sir. More common. To the tune of? 60 to 65%, sir. Yes. 60 to 70% is a 70. sporadic breast cancer. Yes. How, how, why do you say this patient has got familial breast cancer? What are the criteria to say the patient has got familial breast cancer? Sir, if there is a pattern uh, uh, present in the family of the... What pattern? What pattern in the family will say... Because there is a difference between familial breast cancer and hereditary breast cancer. In both the groups, there will be some uh, history of breast cancer or related malignancy in the family. Yes, so, how, how, how do you define... Yes, this is a clear. As you drawn the family history, it's clear that this is an index patient. And no other, no other member in the family has got any other malignancy which are bugger malignancies. Yes, sir. So when you say of, this patient yeah. has got familial breast cancer, hmm. so there what, is that, what is the typical history in patient having familial breast cancer? So in the typical history, there will be um, uh, uh, cancers like pancreatic prostate, this uh, bracket related cancers in the first degree or second degree related, sir. Bracket related malignancy means it's become a definite definite pattern of inheritance is not related malignancies uh, these are the patient who has family history of breast cancer number one they may have other malignancies like colorectal stomach ovarian or uterine but if you see the family history there is no definite mode of inheritance if you talk of inheritance pattern in Hereditary. any malignancy, yes. inheritance patterns, it can be either a recessive inheritance or, or it can be a dominant inheritance. What is the characteristics of a dominant inheritance? Suppose uh, this is carried by a dominant gene. Yes, sir. So what is going to happen? Almost all the members of the family will get affected. Yes, sir. Here you can find in the whole family history one or two members may be affected. So, you cannot ascribe a definite mode of inheritance. Okay? Yes. Sir. Neither is a recessive or maybe a uh, 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 dominant uh, gene penetrance. There are some family history where the pattern of the inheritance is not very clear. Yes, sir. In that case, you say patient has got a familial breast cancer. Familial. What are the criteria to say the patient has got hereditary breast cancer? When you say this patient has got hereditary breast cancer, what are the characteristics of patient having hereditary breast cancer? If you talk to the patient himself or herself, what is the usual situation you start thinking, yes, this might be the hereditary breast cancer. Number one, this patient is 50 years. What yes. is the character of head breast cancer? This occurs in mm. early age group. Early age group, yes, sir. Okay. Mm. It can be more commonly a bilateral breast cancer. Yes, sir. And you have you have in the family tree other members being affected, affected by the either breast or other related malignancies. And and almost all members are affected because it is. Transferred by dominant. One or two members may skip. That is because of spontaneous mutation. But in the family still find there is definite pattern of inheritance which is transferred as the autosomal dominant inheritance. Yes, sir. Okay. So these are the three patterns of breast cancer. You should be knowing and knowing the definitions also. What do you mean by sporadic breast cancer? What do you mean by family breast, breast cancer? And what do you mean hereditary breast cancer? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Next, treatment history. Because she is having symptoms for six months, she might be undergoing some treatment. 
Next. Sir, uh, so I have gone but, to the but is that that should come to your history because patient having locally adverse breast cancer may go to some other place, may get some treatment. So yeah. in the history, you should give us what treatment she has undergone for last six months. Sir, uh, the uh, symptoms for is for three months, and uh, she underwent a biopsy, sir, for the uh, for the lump, sir. So she she attended some clinic and she underwent some investigations. She yes. has not received any specific treatment. Yes. So in this patient, suppose you get a patient the exam, we often give patient the exam that patient has got uh, some neurodegenerative uh, chemotherapy cycles, and then patient is coming to you for review. Okay. Yes, sir. So if if she has not received a specific treatment, you have to mention that biopsy is an investigation. She might have undergone some imaging investigations. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, but you have to mention specifically that patient will be knowing if the patient has received chemotherapy or hormone therapy, patient is, should be knowing that she has given some specific therapy for her malignancy. Yes. You can find some secondary changes like loss of hair. Okay. And she might be telling you if she is receiving a new treatment treatment, she might be telling you that there is some regression. Good. Got my point. Yes, sir. If you are describing down, the story yourself, yes, if the patient is receive, receive some new treatment treatment, in the history that should be reflected. Patient was attended a clinic. She was diagnosed as some malignancy and she was given neurodegenerative treatment. And if she is given neurodegenerative treatment, you have to specify how many cycles of neurodegenerative treatment she has received. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And then describe the response to treatment. Response, the one will be the patient assessment of the response. And Size finish assessment the response and then the investigations. Yes, sir. And then the investigation that your own has to describe. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Madam, you have, actually, Dr. Chintamani has not joined. Uh, maybe he has not received the link. Uh, any, any question, madam? From your side? Uh, no, sir. It's, it's going nicely. <laughs> okay. So, uh, pass on to the examination. Shandip. <coughs> yes, sir. <coughs> the patient is examined in a well lit room after taking proper informed consent with a, a female chaperone beside her. Patient is co conscious, alert, cooperative, and well oriented to time, place, and person. Perf performance status is 90 by Kornofsky score. She is well hydrated, decubitus of choice, nutritionally preserved, overweight with a BMI of 25.2. There is no pallor, sinuses, icterus, clubbing, or pedal edema, no generalized lymphadenopathy. Her vital sign, pulse rate is 80 per minute in the right radial artery, regular with normal volume and character, no radio radial or radio femoral delay. Uh, blood pressure is 130 by 80 in the left arm in the supine position. Respiratory rate is 14 per minute, regular thoracoabdominal type. All the systemic examination are found to be normal. In the local examination, sir, <coughs> sir, I have done the examination of the left or the normal breast first with uh, breast with axilla uh, first, and they are found to be normal. Now, in our uh, inspection of the right breast, uh, there are dilated veins noted over the right breast. There is a, a visible fullness in the right upper quadrant of the right breast. No nipple retraction, dimpling, or puckering noted. Overlying skin of the right breast appears to be normal. There is a small one into one centimeter heel scar of biopsy noted in the upper outer quadrant of the right breast. There is no visible redness discharging sign of fistula from that scar. There are no features of skin involvement like ulceration, uh, satellite nodules, or pudoran noted. Palpation. Palpation is done by the conventional dial, dial clock method. The local regional temperature is not raised. Ill-defined lump size of 7 into 5 cm measured in its greater, greatest dimension and perpendicular to it is palpable at the outer and upper quadrant of the right breast. Lump is mildly tender, uh, tender, hard in consistency, moving slightly with the breast tissue. Lump is not fixed to the overlying tissue as demonstrated by pinch and inch test. The lump is not fixed to the underlying structures, uh, pectoralis major mus muscle. It is not fixed to the chest wall. Uh, in the examination of the right axilla, a single ipsilateral mobile lymph node of size 1 in 1.5 into 1.5 centimeter with firm consistency is palpable in the right axilla belonging to the central group of lymph nodes. Now, the examination of abdomen, it is soft, non-tender, no, no palpable lump is noted, normal bowel sounds present. The examination of thoracic spine, no point of tenderness noted, vertebrae in normal shape and contour. 
per vagina and the digital rectal examination uh, was intended but um, i did not do sir so on the summary of the case yeah which complete i then yeah okay sir um the 50 50 years old post menopausal lady with a lump in her right breast okay. for 3 months it was rapidly progressive in size with no history of nipple discharge or nipple retraction oh, yeah it was pain, painless initially but subsequently became painful no history of suggestive of distant metastasis there is no history of menstrual irregularities abortion miscarriages or intake of hormone replacement therapy on examination of 7 to 5 cm hard lump felt at the upper outer quadrant of the right breast with an irregular surface and no fixity to skin or pectoralis major muscle or chest wall there is a 1.5 into 1.5 cm single mobile ipsilateral lymph node palpable in the axilla with firm consistency so uh, my provisional diagnosis a 50 years old uh, post menopausal lady with carcinoma right breast clinical stage of c t3 n1 m0 sir okay come to the uh, general survey is done next uh, local examination yeah show the picture first picture yes so this is a patient he have examine the patient with her hands on the waist and yes, she is sitting yes sir what type of breast it is so this is you, a pendulous look breast. at the pendulous breast yes and once she is sitting yes sir patient has got a pendulous breast uh, on inspection can you see the inferior quadrants of the breast inferior no sir no mm. so in examination you are supposed to describe and do the different examination in different positions you have not mentioned that i have examined the patient with the patient sitting on the uh, couch with uh, hands on the sides you have not said i examined the patient with the hands lifted above the head i have not you have to examine the patient on supine with a uh, recumbency position of 45 degree so that you can look at the inferior quadrant of the base so the other things you should start before you start describing clear okay sir you have examined the patient And, and sometimes all examiner does not uh, uh, prefer the term using informed consent. You see, this is a clinical examination. Yes, sir. Here in the consent, there is nothing in the treatment that you are offering. It, okay. it should be just a consent. Informed consent means you you explain the patient the pros and cons of the disease yes, and the treatment what you are offering. Okay, sir. That is informed consent. in a clinical examination you need to obtain a consent from the patient for giving a clinical examination there is no relevance to her uh, treatment process or the outcome okay so informed yes. consent the term the word informed is not required okay. you can just say i have taken a consent for the examination yes okay number 1 next person yes sir you see uh, you, you should always keep in mind how do you describe how do you describe a patient with breast ailment okay, okay. so you, you study the dilated veins you study the fullness that is not the way you start the first point to start about is what position and symmetry of the breast okay sir okay that is the first point if you talk of the patient patient having a lump of 7.5 cm show the picture again yes sir You see, if you if you consider the two breasts, I, I I'm not very sure, but I feel that the right breast is hanging at a little lower level than the opposite breast. Is it right? Yes, sir. So, so if you go by the position symmetry, the right breast, if you see the bulkiness there, I I can assume I can see this that the right breast is bulkier than the left breast. Number one. Yes, sir. Right breast is hanging at a lower level than the left breast. Okay. Yes, sir. What happens? What is the idea of examining different positions? In this position, I can make out yes, the right breast is hanging at a lower level. Now you ask the patient to lift her hand above the head. What what change may come up? What happens in the normal breast? Sir, uh, if the uh, when the patient raises her hand, they above the head. Then if there is any lump or there is now, if, any, what happens in the normal breast? What is going to happen in the normal breast? The both uh, both the breast will get lifted up. Sir. Yes, in 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 
asking the patient to read the hand above the head normally both the breasts are little pulled hair up yes sir patient having a breast lump which is bulkier may not go up to the same extent so this disparity of the level of the breast may get altered okay yes, yes so sir. the first thing to comment about that you said lead breast is normal lead breast is normal on inspection palpation and all the points okay sir. but point is to consider between a, it is a bilateral organ so you yes, have to sir. compare one side to the opposite side then only yes. you can say is normal or some uh, abnormal is there in that breast okay <coughs> so the, so the first point is to describe the position and symmetry of the breast number one next point to describe next go to the inspection yes sir inspection yes so next point to describe is the nipple and areola two things can happen one is there is some patient where the nipple may be get retracted yes, areola get retracted that is one or patient has got a large lump this can stretch the breast skin the areola area <coughs> may be stuck so you have to compare the areola and nipple on both sides yes sir and subtle nipple retraction may not be obvious on just inspection on sitting posture how can you make a subtle nipple retraction more evident sir if the patient raises her head, arms above the head yes. uh, number then... one it can be tested by asking the patient to lift the hand above the head and he asks the patient to press with the hand on her waist yes sir this can make subtle nipple retraction be more obvious yes sir so next heading i i am trying to describe you the examination under different headings okay. first heading is position and symmetry of breast left right next is nipple and areola you have mentioned there is no nipple retraction there is no uh, in, in, or puckering. Uh, puckering there is no uh, retraction of the areolar area okay no yes, nipple sir. discharge is obvious on examination yes sir and then you would describe the fullness you say the fullness this patient complained of a lump yes sir. and if you see the fullness you describe that as a lump you may not get the margins clearly on inspection yes sir but as the patient is describing this lump you describe there is a lump in the right there is a lump point. or fullness in this area of the breast involving this quadrant if you if you if you said you uh, you examine the patient like a dial clock so yes, you start examining like the clock yes, going by clockwise rotation okay yes, and Makunda. then <coughs> Makunda. yes 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 please uh, so uh, uh, we'll have to tell him or them uh, all the students here that while they raise the hand of the patient the infra memory surface of the breast can be visible yeah and sometimes the skin changes like the puckering and teetering becomes more prominent yeah even the lump which is on the outer uh, outer lateral and outer uh, quadrant of the breast becomes more prominent while we are asking the patient to raise her hand yeah so that's uh, because he has not mentioned that he has examined ah uh, yeah I, 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 i'm i'm yeah. i'm hearing that you are telling him that yeah. but these are the points which have to be uh, noted down once again and you can't just while we are describing in different positions all these details have to be described in all the positions so okay so now you describe the lump you got a fullness or swelling in this area of the breast and on inspection you try to describe the swelling yes sir okay now yes. next is you comment about the skin over the breast try to yes. understand all the points are different yes sir you have described the position symmetry number 1 number 2 nipple areola next the swelling and next they describe the skin changes okay yes, so yes. you said uh, what is the difference between skin fixity and skin puckering mm. what is the difference between saying something that this, this skin is puckered or dimpled and this skin is fixed to the underlying tumor so underlying tumor uh, underlying tumors are the uh, lump may be uh, you are doing inspection so yes. in, on inspection you cannot because the yes sir fix to the skin or not unless there is a gross ulceration yes sir so puckering means there may be dimpling mm-hmm. overlying the swelling 
and this dimpling may not be obvious when the patient is sitting like this yes. as madam said that you ask the patient to lift the hand above lift the head that. or yes, press sir. on the waist yes sir. this puckering may become prominent why does the puckering occurs in the skin what is the explanation for appearance of puckering of the skin sir it is due to the involvement of the ligament of cooper sir yes so there is infiltration of the tumor cells and the cooper's ligament so yes. the normal is the cooper ligament is lost there is some retraction okay that is yes. one and the skin fixity is when the tumor cells reach the corium of the skin yes sir and if you go by the tnm definition simple skin fixity does not alter t stage t stage yes sir okay so now in the skin of the breast you describe these points you study the dilated veins i do not like it okay sir okay so dilated veins comes much later in the skin description okay okay, okay skin sir. over the breast as a whole why does the pearly orange occurs in the breast so it is due to the involvement of the subdermal lymphatic sir yes and and this pearly orange if it is in this patient this is not there okay. if the pearly orange is there in it that case t4 t4 b sir no no try to understand what i am yes. trying to say is okay sir if the pearly orange change is there you have to describe the extent of pearly orange change okay sir okay this can okay, be pearly orange over just confined to the area of the tumor itself or it can be a pearly orange change involving the whole of the breast yes sir and and if there is extensive pearly orange you need to differentiate this pearly orange change in a inflammatory breast cancer versus pearly orange change because of underlying lump in the breast yes sir okay yes sir so how do you how do you differentiate the patient is having a inflammatory breast cancer or patient is being a underlying uh, breast cancer which has got secondary change of pearly orange how do you differentiate Mm. one is how to differentiate between inflammatory breast cancer and a breast cancer with a lump causing secondary pearly orange change uh, sir by uh, palpation uh, squeezing the skin of number one is history history sir in okay. history patient may not complain of any definite lump in the breast number one and the history is very fast usually less than 6 months Yes, and there is per extensive pearly change more than one third of the breast yes sir okay yes sir and and if you examine the patient you don't find a definite lump in the breast yes sir okay yes, so sir. try to modify your examination based on these points okay sir okay and yes, then sir. next palpation yes You see, this this is very important. Once you say conventional direct clock method, yes, sir. in this patient who has got is such a large pendulous breast, the most important part of palpation should be done in what position? The in the supine position, sir. Supine position with with patient being lifted by forty five degree, put it up, and hands on the side of the head. Got my yes. point. Yes, sir. That is the best position for a patient who is having a uh, such pendulous base for proper examination of all the areas in the breast. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes. So sir. now you have started explaining the ill-defined. You see, patient having usually breast lump of this dimension, they are not ill-defined lumps. You can easily make out patient having a sheer breast that you can see all the margins of the lump. So don't try to describe a lump which is ill-defined on palpation. Okay, sir. Most of the lump in the breast, which are malignancies, are clearly well defined, defined lumps with uh, uh, margin. But you can see the margins. Margins are irregular. Okay, sir. Surface may become appear irregular. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes. So, uh, you, you have to describe that if you have a lump of this dimension, this patient has got a bulky breast. Yes, sir. So, in that case, you can say that the patient is confined to the upper and outer quadrant. But yeah. a lump of seven centimeters is a quite large lump, large, yeah. and if you want to draw these areas, uh, if the lump is encroaching into the other quadrant, you have to say that also. Whether the lump is encroaching into the inner quadrant or lump is into the central quadrant central. of the breast or not. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And this lump is hard in consistency. 
you say the lap is not fixed to the underlying tissue. Yes, and sir. Underlying tissue and the overlying tissue. Overlying tissue means what? Skin. Skin, sir. Yes, sir. And underlying tissues means? Petrolized major muscle, sir. And if, uh, I, if, I, if I ask you clinically during exam, yes, how sir. have you asserted the lamp is not fixed to the underlying uh, pectoral muscle? What is the steps of this examination? What are, the, what are the steps of examination to say that the lamp is not fixed to the underlying pectoral muscle? Sir, uh, firstly, the patient is asked to keep her hands on the waist. Then the lump is moved along, uh, along and across the means and perpendicular to the direction of the pectoral um, fibers, muscle fibers of pectoral is major, sir. Yes. And uh, then what is what is what is your inference at this point? The patient has kept his hand on the waist, has not contracted the pectoral is major muscle. Yes, sir. So you are examining the patient lump with the muscle being relaxed. Now two things can happen: the lump is mobile. Second possibility is lump is fixed as such without muscle being contracted. Sir, if the uh, if the lump is mobile, then the, that indicates that the lump is not fixed to the chest wall, sir. Like? Uh, yes, sir. Like what? Chest wall means what? Uh, chest wall means the serratus anterior, the uh, ribs, sir. Serratus anterior? Chest, uh, the rib, uh, ribs. Ribs and intercostal muscles. Intercostal muscles, sir. Okay. Uh, yes. So if the lump is mobile, the inference is the lump is not fixed to the underlying chest wall. Yes, sir. If the lump is fixed as such, lump then is chest wall. The would, you, the... would you ask the patient now to contract the pectoral release? No, no, sir. No, sir. no it is not necessary. I like, don't understand. That is yes. not necessary now at this point to ask the patient to contract the pectoral is major muscle. Yes, sir. If the lump is mobile, then you ask the patient to contract the pectoral is major by pressing the hand on the waist. Yes, sir. What are you going to look for? Uh, the uh, the pectoral muscle then gets taut, and uh, the lump is then again moved in the same direction. Uh, and compared the range of and the range of the mobility of the uh, lump is noted, sir. Yeah. So, contract the muscle and test for the mobility again. And if the lump is now uh, restricted, sir, uh, yes. fixed, then the uh, then it is fixed to the pectoral muscle, sir. Uh, does it alter TNM staging? If yeah. the lump is fixed to the pectoralis major muscle, will it alter the uh, TNM staging? No, sir. No. Fine. So don't make a heading of examination of right axilla. Okay, sir. You see, it is examination of the regional limb node. Okay, sir. Okay. So examine okay. the axilla, examine the neck. Patient having breast malignancy can have metastasis deposit in the supraclavicular node also. Yes, sir. So examine the regional node. You have not mentioned that you have examined the opposite axilla. If the opposite axilla node is palpable and you don't find a lump in the right breast clinically, what, what may be your impression? You find a node in the opposite axilla. So it is a metastatic not... disease, sir. One is from where? Uh, from, the, from the right breast, sir. From the right breast. Another possibility? You have an impalpable lump in the opposite impalpable. breast. Yes, sir. Try to understand. If you have an impalpable lump in the breast and radiologically you find a focus in the right breast, you have to assume that this might be a deposit from the right breast itself. Yes, sir. If radiologically and clinically you don't find a lump in the breast on the right on the opposite side and you find a lump uh, in the axilla on the opposite side, that may be taken as a metastatic deposit from this Opposite breast. Yes, sir. So make a heading of examination of regional limb nodes. Okay. Okay. Sir. okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Come on to that. Next. Okay. Fine. Come to the diagnosis. Summary part. Okay. Yes, on examination, yes, when you say now, on examination, you say in one line, general physical examination is normal. Okay. On on local exam, the breast, right breast is bulkier than the right breast, pushed at a lower level. There is a lump in the breast, which is of this dimension, not fixed to the skin, underlying structures. And then you describe the regional limb nodes. There is no evidence of any abnormal in the system examination. Okay, oh, so okay, okay, sir. examination, you cover all these three points. 
you have done a general survey you have done local examination and system examination okay sir provisional diagnosis Uh, so uh, clinically, this is uh, T3, N1, M0. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, uh, and uh, you at the beginning, you said you are presenting case of locally advanced base cancer. How do you define a patient having locally advanced base cancer? What are the criteria to define patient having locally advanced base cancer? Sir, uh, if the tumor size is greater than 5 centimeters, sir? And uh, uh, give a clear definition. Don't, don't there is a gray area in between, but give a clear definition. Suppose greater than five centimeter, N zero. We still put this in the LVC. No, no, sir, no, sir. And? Sir, uh, T three tumor, T three tumors with um N one, N two, N three nodes, sir. Yes. Uh, uh, then, sir, uh, T four tumors with any uh, any N. Yes. And sir, uh, if there is uh, any any T with uh, N2 or N3 nodes, sir. Yes. So that is how you define local elevation, sir. And there should be no evidence of uh, metastasis. Distance metastasis, sir. There should be no evidence. That is the definition for locally advanced based cancer. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Do you like to put any differential diagnosis in this patient? Any differential diagnosis in this patient? Don't bring any wild diagnosis. Don't say fibrodenoma in this patient. No, no, sir. Mm. Phylot, sir. Yes. Why not? You have a large lump, which is rapidly increasing. But what is the point against phylot in this patient? Huh? Is it common to have lymph node enlargement in a patient with no, a tumor? No, sir. No, sir. No, it's not usual. And if you say that if the tumor is uh, irregular in surface and uh, margins are irregular, is it common to have a irregular mass in patient having phyllos tumor? No, sir. It's a well defined mass. Easily well defined mass and surface easily smooth. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, keeping your diagnosis in mind, how will you proceed to manage this patient? Sir, I will. Uh, I will like to proceed with some investigation to confirm the diagnosis, uh, stage the disease, and to treat the patient, sir. In the uh, in, in, in CA brace, is better to say that I'll go for triple assessment. Yes, sir. Triple assessment, sir. Yes. So, you have, what you said is right for other malignancies, but patient having a CA brace, the best our answer is. Sir, I will complete my triple assessment of the patient. I have already done my clinical examination. And yeah. now we are going to do some imaging and a, a, histopathology. And a histopathology. So what imaging you order for this patient? Uh, sir, uh, I will um, order sir, sonomammography for this patient, sir. You see, you have seen the patient. This patient has got a very bulky breast. Yes, sir. So what are you going to do? What do you mean by sonomammography? So, uh, combination of ultrasonography with my mammography, sir. Because uh, what are you going uh, to look for? So, uh, so make it very clear. Yes, sir. You say one line sonomammography. Uh, it needs to be explained. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. For the first assessment, if this patient has been is a very bulky breast. Yes, sir. Mammography may not be very uh, delineative in this patient. So, first thing to do in this patient will be doing a good ultrasonography, and followed by mammography. Mammography. Okay. Sir. Okay. Both. You have to do both in this patient. Yes, sir. The lump you described, what are the characteristics of a lump in ultrasonography to say this is, might be a malignant mass? Sir, uh, 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 taller than... Sir... Um, Let's talk of the architecture. Uh, architecture, sir. What? If you, if you do ultrasonography, you describe it by the ecogenicity. Ecogenicity is raised, sir. And, um, uh, Only raised, or it can be a better described as a mixed ecogenicity. Mi mix, okay, sir. Mixed ecogenic lesion, number one. Number two. Microcalcification, sir. Yes. What and, else? Um, then, sir. Uh, if you see the outline of this swelling. Yes, sir. What may be the abnormality at the periphery of the swelling? Will it be clear, smooth margin? Or it will show speculated margin that can be easily 
speculated yes. margin sir speculated margin yes sir then what else the uh, sir loss of central what i'm not talking about the deep notes i'm talking about the large pistol what else you can make out we talked of calcification yes sir you talk of the Ego. margin uh, what about the vascularity of the swelling sir it will be um, hypervascular sir hypervascular so apply color doppler in this patient you can find the lump is hypervascular uh, that in a patient has got a obvious lump of such dimension uh, is not necessary to do the further investigation in the form of uh, some uh, other uh, investigation for a doubtful lump is there any other uh, We can of, we can go go for MRI, sir. No MRI is next. I will come to the MRI first. You see, uh, not all patient require MRI. Yes, uh, sir. Ultrasound give all the almost all findings are MRI. Is there any role for elastography? Yes, yeah. sir. I don't know, sir. You read. Okay. Uh, there is a role for the elastography because if it is a malignant mass, it is different from a benign mass. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. And then you said you'll do mammography. And what about axilla? Axilla, sir. Ultrasonography. Uh, so, sir, uh, the axilla lymph nodes are uh, best delineated in the by ultrasound, sir. And the uh, lymph nodes. What, what are the characteristics of a malignant lymph node on ultrasonography? Sir, loss of fatty hilum, sir. Before that, uh, taller than wider, sir. Taller than wider is not the definition for. Lymph node. What is in the lymph node? First is the lymph node enlargement size. Yes, sir. What size of lymph node under ultrasound is taken as significant? Yes, sir. Greater than one centimeter. Yes. One centimeter size is significant. Sometimes seven millimeter is also taken as significant node. Yes. And then, what are the important characteristics? What happens to the shape of the node? Uh, the shape becomes, what is the normal shape normal shape is uh, oh, no. oval shape it go, normal it, is oval shaped it becomes sure. normal is oval shaped normal oh. lymph nodes are kidney shaped okay sir normal lymph nodes are kidney shaped and this hilum the kidney shaped hilum is lost in patient has got a metastatic node yes sir okay and what else happens in the lymph node the outline if you see the periphery of the node it may become irregular or there may be breach in the capsule of the node okay sir then the central fatty hilum is lost okay yes sir and then again the vascularity of the lymph node will be increased it will be increased sir you say you will do mri in this patient with this lump and yes, this finding yes, what are the indication for doing mri because now more and more people are going into our mri but you see in our patient population it don't be ideal to do mri in all the patients yes sir how mri is superior to these two investigations sir mri is indicated if there is multifocal multicentric uh, tumor yes. sir so if you are planning to do a best conserving surgery yes, you sir. have to exclude multicentric disease so mri can pick up a multicentric disease yes, better yes. a, a non palpable lump here yes, the sir. lump is 7 cm it is not difficult to make out the lump clinically and by ultrasound or mammography yes in a non palpable situation it is a better mode of investigation to pick up a very uh, small impalpable lump in the breast yes sir and the multicentricity so mri is not routine patient having such a large lump Uh, MRI may not be essential, but if you go to the uh, uh, more uh, uh, dedicated breast uh, cancer unit, they do MRI more frequently. Yes, sir. What about PET CT? PET CT is done, sir. If there is a, uh, will you do a PET CT in this patient? No, sir. No, sir because there is, there is no symptoms of bone. Uh, this is the patient who has got CT three N one M zero. Yes, sir. apart from the that imaging investigations 
will you think of doing some investigation to ascertain any distance spread yes i will do uh, uh, yes. a ct thorax yes usg abdomen and um, is usg abdomen the recommendation if you uh, go CT, by the ncc and guidelines ct abdomen sir yes ct, CT abdomen, abdomen and pelvis. pelvis and and bone scanning bone scanning sir so so if you are if the patient is candidate for systemic screening you are doing ct thorax ct abdomen and ct pel ct pelvis and the bone scanning yes sir and now people are started saying that uh, these three invasion can be replaced by a pet ct pet scan sir yes sir so although a pet ct has not become the standard of care because sometimes pet ct can overstage the tumor some inflammatory mass in the mediastinum can be picked up in pet ct yes sir so uh, uh, you should not be rigid saying that i not do pet ct for staging investigation i can do this ct thorax ct abdomen pelvis and the whole body bone scanning but in some situation pet ct can replace this investigations so you have to balance what investigation do in these patients but it is clear that this patient needs a systemic uh, screening metastatic for workup. metastatic workup Yes, sir. In early patients, you don't do this. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And you said you will do a histology, a spot tipple assessment. Yes, sir. What biopsy you'll do in this patient? Sir, um, core biopsy, sir. A blind core biopsy or a um, guided core image, biopsy? image image guided core biopsy. Sir. Yes, the in exam the answer should be I will do image guided core biopsy. Because the yield for image guided core biopsy is much more than the unguided biopsy. Unguided, yes, sir. Particularly if the patient has got a mixed uh, density uh, lump, he may hit a, a area of necrosis. Yes, sir. So in that situation, a image guided core biopsy is much better. Yes, sir. Why do you want to do core biopsy rather than FNA? Um, sir, for um, because um, FNA cannot differentiate between invasiveness of the tumor. And uh, second, it cannot give the immunohistochemistry of the uh, tumor, sir. Yeah. So the reliability of Tukat biopsy is much more than the FNA. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, and sir. you can do the immunohistochemistry on your Tukat biopsy. Tukat biopsy. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So that is the staging investigation and the working diagnosis. What is the strategy for managing a patient having local advanced breast cancer? This patient has got a bulky breast with this lump with a node in the axilla. What should be your strategy? What is the recommended uh, strategy for managing this patient? Um, so first, I'll um, uh, in discuss this case with a multidisciplinary uh, team. And then uh, the, it will be first. And, and, and is the histology and ISC important in discussion? Yes, sir. What? Because the um, uh, hist immunohistochemistry will uh, help in the um, uh, chemotherapy in giving the selection of the chemotherapy, sir. What else? In immunohistochemistry, you are talking of the ERPR, heart to new status. Yes, sir. You are not talking of that also. Does heart to new uh, modifies the chemotherapy regime? Uh, sir, uh, the, then uh, the, uh, if the heart tissue positive, then uh, trastuzumab uh, can be given, sir. Trastuzumab based chemotherapy. Has based, to be given. Best, uh, yes, sir. Based chemotherapy. Can this be is a patient has got a rapidly increased in lump. Yes, sir. And if it is a uh, ERPR negative. Yes, sir. And the heart to new negative also, triple negative breast cancer, what should be the chemotherapy regime? Will it be CMF, CF, or something else? It should be a taxane based chemotherapy. Yeah. Okay. okay. AC, AC followed by T, sir. Yes. So you have to keep in mind the importance of this immunology chemistry. Yes. We will definitely discuss in multidisciplinary team. And this is a patient who has got a bulky breast. Yes, sir. And you are planning for neurological treatment in New York. What about the limb node uh, assessment in this patient? You have clinically said it is an N1 node and you have done ultrasonography. You find there is a node, single node. Yes, sir. And you have decided to uh, give this patient new adjuvant treatment. Yes, sir. So what, what precaution you should take before you uh, consider this form of treatment? 
this patient is a candidate for what? BCS, MRM? Sir, this is a patient for MRM, sir. Why? The concept is over. You see, the concept of MRM for LABC is not there now. In LABC patient, particularly patient having such a large bulky breast, there is definite role for doing best conserving surgery in these patients. Okay, sir. So it's not MRM all the time. Okay, sir. So if you talk of VCS, you have to keep in mind that you are giving the patient chemotherapy with the intent of the downstaging the mass. Yes, sir. What about node? Is there any role for placing a marker in the no, tumor and the node itself? Yes, sir. Um, what? Sir, uh, clipping, sir. When? Uh, Actually, time is up. There is a lot of discussion. So, I think uh, we have a case of early casting of breast next time. We will skip the clinical part. We will discuss the management part. We will discuss both early. You will be on this class also next time. Okay. Oh, okay. For early breast cancer, we will skip the clini clinical part we have discussed. We will discuss the management part combining the early and the local advanced local breast cancer. Okay, sir. Okay. Sandeep? Okay, okay, thank you. We finish up today. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you.